Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 164 of um, Prog Review. That's it. It's been such a long time, I nearly forgot. Anyway, um, if you haven't read the description, uh, I use, I'm talking about this one. This is a Joy of a Toy uh, by Kevin Ayers. Um, yeah, as I've mentioned before in other videos, I was incredibly saddened to hear about the passing of Kevin Ayers in... Well, 18th of February 2013, just three days before my birthday. And, you know, you know, I wanted to do something. I wanted to, you know, do a little thing um, about his music. And I didn't know which album to look at. So I thought, well, you know, go back to the beginning. And so this is why I'm selecting his very first album, uh, Joy of a Toy, which I just introduced. It's autology. I'm just repeating myself. Um, LAUGHTER um, Kevin Ayers is, is kind of, is kind of one of those people who fell through the cracks in, in in rock and roll in popular music, and he was a man of I believe of great potential. He had a unique voice and somebody whose songs could be you know melancholic one moment, and you know full of humour the next. He he skirted various you know genres and things, and you know he's one of those typical. Uh, it sounds like a cliche, but he was one of those typically eccentric Englishmen that you've you've read about, you know, and you know. And if you're um, unfamiliar with his work, because you know not everybody's heard of Kevin Ayers, not any, you know, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah, we can't hear everything. No one can. But um, yeah, it's, I was trying to think the best way of describing him. He's got the kind of the whimsy of, of Sid Barrett and the, the the that kind of voice of Nick Drake. And uh, the self-destructive nature of every rock and roll star that's ever lived. There you go. That's Kevin Ayers in a in a, a nutshell. No, Kevin Ayers in a nutshell is help. Get me out of this nutshell. That's an old joke. That's terrible. That one. That's terrible. You, you didn't have to laugh at that. Anyway, he started his career with Soft Machine, but you already knew that. No, all right. And he he departed. He, he played on. He played on their first album. And he he left after he realised you know he wasn't a pop band anymore, you know they were you know heading into nudely jazz territory so, you know they were moving in different directions so you know you can hear him on his first album and they, um they helped him with this, you know he sung and played bass on the Soft Machine the first record and they, in turn, backed him on Joy of a Toy, um and it's yeah it's quite hard. To, to imagine that at one point Kevin Ayers was actually touted as the the new David Bowie, and I mean that's how much faith the industry had in him. Um, but he had this habit of eschewing um, popularity and seeking refuge in the nearest bottle. Um, Flying Start by Mike Oldfield, in which Ayers sings on and appears in the video. I'm sure you can find it on the YouTube. Is um, kind of a semi autobiographical song about his excesses though it doesn't actually mention uh, the time when Oldfield bought Ayers uh, a, recording, a recording studio I think it was a thank you for his help over the years because he used Oldfield on um, Shooting at the Moon his next album and uh, so anyway yeah Ayers has this recording studio and he sold it to, to, to fund his coke habit and that's rock and roll for you Anyway, I digress. I really do digress in this instance. So we better get back to the record. Uh, the album begins with the, the title track, obviously. It's a stomping, upbeat, vivacious, childlike instrumental featuring brass, kazoo, uh, vocals, you know, tra la 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 la, amongst other things. And it's the sort of the song that you'd, you'd, you'd have played at your funeral just to confuse the in laws, if you know what I mean. It's, it's very British, surreal, eccentric. Without going that too far as to lose its charm it's you know there's a lot of charm on this record that's what you'll find this is this is why it's very easy to get into to kevin Ayers' music there's a lot of charm to it and this is followed by town feeling and it's a it's a song which kind of shifts the tone downwards somewhat so again there's always like a, a sad sadness there's a thread of sadness running through his work and and then there's always something about this song that always leaves me feeling a little maudlin but i guess that's the whole point of the song um, the oboe part, played by uh, Paul Minns, seems to dominate and act as a counterpoint to the lead guitar line. Um, and it's a very strong medley, 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 med oh, wrong teeth, melody, repeat after me, a melody. 
It's a very strong melody, even, and demonstrates airs a mellifluous voice. Oh, yes, indeed. Um, and then we have another change of tone with uh, the clarietta rag, which I don't think is really a rag, but it's a very strange arrangement. It's all jollity and brassy and in kind of sub-musical comedy kind of thing. It's, it's infectious, but a little bit bonkers. You get a lot of that with Ayers. <laughs> Girl on a Swing, however, is another piece of, of classic Kevin Ayers, which is dreamy and figures... Figures. What am I doing? Features. I'm out of practice. This is this is it. That's what the missus keeps telling me. I'm out of practice, and it features some rather strange production choices, like the overbearing uh, tremolo guitar in the left ear. Uh, it's a slight piece. It doesn't have much substance to it, but... Airs himself is his voice that makes it musically memorable. On Song for Insane Times, you can hear what um, Soft Machine might have sounded like if Airs had stayed with them. And um, and on this, his vocal delivery isn't that far off Nick Drake, though you know, he's more solid. Whereas you know Nick Drake's voice was you know a bit more you know airy, airy, not hairy, not hairy, airy, airy. Um, I'm not. Yeah, I'm. The problem with this song is it's. It's. I don't feel it's particularly airs, airsian, airsian, like airs, airs, airy, airs. God, it's, it's going on a bit, isn't it? It's going. It's going. It's going around in circles now. I'm on some sort of repeat function. Nudge him. Nudge him. It's. It lacks his style. It's very like. Like I say, very much like a soft machine thing. This is appalling. This is. This is. I'm just. I'm not doing this very. I'm not doing a, a very good tribute to Mr. Ayers on this. Um, it lacks the spark of eccentricity which features on like the rest of the album. So I'm not. Uh, I'm kind of indifferent to it. And if we had a B-side, if we had a B-side, but we're playing it on CD, um, the next song is "Stop This Train." Stop this train, indeed, or stop this train. Open parentheses again. Doing it. Close parentheses. And it's. Um, the song itself is bookended by it speeding up and slowing down in typically 60s style. You know, they slow the tape up and you know, speed it up and slow it down, so it's kind of you know, a little bit weird. Um, and it thunders along at a hell of a pace. And the thing that is memorable for me is the bass playing from Ayers. It's like, you know, do, 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 do. Very good bass player. And it kind of documents the train journey from hell, complete with distorted vocal. And thankfully, balance is restored by Eleanor's Cake. Open parentheses, which ate her closed parentheses. He's very, he's very, he loves the parentheses, does old airs, which sees him going back to his acoustic guitar. See them, I'm doing the mime, I'm doing the mime for this sweet little number, which is part folk, part pop, and has some really like tasteful flute in it. It's a very popular song of his, and it's, I, I find it a very nice track. Um, and then probably, well, for me, the song of the album. Oh, the song, the song of the ass, a very grand statement. For me, for me, the big song of the album is, is um, Lady Rachel, which is it's a very strange song. And there's various versions of, of it on here. You've got the, the album version, and it's there are a couple of extended versions with extra voices and strings, but this version is kind of stripped back, and it's a gothic horror, and... Um, and there's a like a really ominous bass part to it, boom, 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 and you have the image of Lady Rachel hiding from the dark, but not escaping her dreams, and it's you know, it's quite something. So lyrically, he paints a very vivid picture. Dog scratching. Do you mind? Do you mind, Alex? I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to do this. He's looking at me. He, he don't. He don't care. He don't care, dear. No. Um. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. It's very gothic, and it's it's um. Oh, dark, very dark, and who there's something eerie about it. And I've always liked it though, it's, even though it's quite disconcerting. And it does show the depth of his songwriting, his ability of you know conjure quite strong imagery. And this is followed by Ole Ole Bandu Bang Dong. No, somebody hasn't spiked my weak orange drink. Um, this is actually based on a Malaysian folk song. Oh yeah, and is quite discordant. Um, uh, it's not a favourite of mine. I find it a bit of a difficult listen, but again, it shows Ayers wasn't afraid to experiment with his music, and he tries to cover you know, different musical styles. He's very broad in that that respect. And then the album, as we know it, 
uh, draws to close with all this crazy gift of time, which sees him going back, scaling back the production, going back to his guitar and harmonica, and singing double track to himself. Yeah, it's okay. It's not as memorable as some of the other songs on the on the record, and it and it brings the album to a rather, in my opinion, muted close. It just kind of you know fades out. Now this is the 2003 reissue of it, and you know, you know they love to fill your boots. They really do. And on this, it's ex- it's expanded. Oh yeah, with a load of extra tracks, including various versions of religious experience. Open parenthesis, singing a song in the morning. Close parenthesis. That's boring me now. Which is a, a corking little song. I like it. It's a, a quite a good pop song actually. And one of the edits actually features. Sid Barrett on the guitar. Oh yes, that's Sid Barrett. You see, Barrett was recording um, the Madcap Laughs in the other studio uh, with members of Soft Machine because White plays drums on that as well. When he, when Barrett wandered in and, according to Ayers, was completely wasted and couldn't even tune his guitar. Well, it's here on the record for those who are curious. So you've got a link from Floyd to Soft Machine to Ayers to yeah. You know, it's all it's all joined. The interconnectivity of of prog. Oh yes, indeed. Um, and you also have um, extended mixes of uh, Lady Rachel and the excellent Soon, 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 which I, re- I really is quite a boppy little number I quite enjoy. And of course, as these reissues go, there's a lovely little essay in the booklet uh, to get you familiar with the artist and give a decent you know, historical context to the album. Oh, yes, indeed. Now, in terms of a rating, oh, oh dear, I'm giving this a very strong four joyous toys out of five yes that's four joyous toys out of five yes indeedy and um you know hopefully you didn't notice the edit i I missed my 12 minute mark didn't i i was getting so carried away i I forgot the 12 minute didn't i i don't don't know where i don't know where we left off um should i do the rating again what do you reckon or did we do the rating no so I would have done the rating with four joyous toys out of five, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'm going back to my my summing up. You know, Kevin is to me is a very special and unique talent, and you know, I, you know, it still saddens me that he's gone. You know, I always thought there was um, great potential if you have the chance. His last album, The Unfair Ground, is is really good, um, and it's a. I'll do this. I'll do this one day. And um, you know, check him out. And if I can, you know, if I can get one of you, just one of you, to go out there and discover his music, then I've done my bit. You know, my job here is done, and I disappear in a in a in a steam of vapor. Poof, gone, I'm gone. But no, Kevin is a great shame. All the rock and rollers are going, and um, it kind of makes you all too weary of your own mortality and. Um, no. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Ayers. It's been great. And your mu- <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting emotional. Uh, your music um, lives on, and that's it. So my name's been Darren Locke. I've been blabbering on about Joy of a Toy, Kevin Ayers, and that's it. Um, only one more thing to say. Program.